All righty. Well, uh, I don't think we don't, we've got Melody, we got Shane, Randy. I don't think I heard Omar or, or Juan come in. So let's just, uh, let's get started. Uh, last time we talked about sound and uh, we talked about the four properties of sound. And I kind of want to, you know, just bring Shane up to speed really quick. Uh, Melody, do you remember our four properties of sound? See, why would you ask me that? Yeah, it's um, the pitch, uh, intensity, the uh, t trombone, trum timbre, timbre. Okay, and um, frequency. No, one other. We got pitch. frequency, duration, duration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, the length and time. Yeah, okay. Okay, so so listen. Thank you, Melody. That was good. <laughs> that was. And one, thing, one thing that I want to bring up is that uh, in music theory, and, and Shane, I know you've had quite a bit in your life, is that it could confuse you quite quickly, and it can be very misleading at times, especially with terminology. And we talked about sound, and we really, we talked mainly about frequency, so that that people have an idea of what frequency is. Uh, also, somebody brought up tone, and I kind of wanted to, to wait about tone a little bit till tonight before we actually discuss tone. Uh, I want to go back to frequency. Last time I talked about uh, the frequency of a note. If you double the frequency, what happens, Melody? What is that? It's an octave. It's a chord. <laughs> no, it's still an octave. You're, you're playing a, if you double the frequency of a note and you play another note, we've just, we, that's an octave. Oh, so, and, Jim, remember? Go ahead. So, so just, just quickly, because I, I kind of think in math. So you're going for, you go 200 hertz to 800 hertz. I, I know these aren't real values in our scale, but 200 hertz to eight to 400 to 800 to 1600 yes you would oh, okay, okay. so every you're literally you double every generation you're doubling got it every doubling you 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 you, do, you go an octave okay so okay. uh and if we go the other direction if you're at 400 hertz and, and you divide it by two and you go to 200 hertz like your square you still moved an octave just an octave down mm -hmm. okay and uh, something that you said, Randy, in a, in a discussion that we had was, you know, let's discuss the things that we're going to be really using and that you'll need. And that's kind of the whole outline of this class. It's not to go through every piece of, of theory that we can, but more the pieces that we could really use and get going and understand. So with that in mind, you know, each note has a frequency. And I want to distinguish between tone and frequency. Tone is something that we all think of tone as, you know, the phone. The phone has a tone when you hit a button on a phone. And actually, what you don't realize is that, uh, are you familiar, is anybody familiar with DTMF, what that stands for? No. It's something you used to write on phones. It stands for dual tone, meaning two tones. But when you hear the dual tones, multiple frequencies, but when you hear the tone on the phone, you hear one tone as far as you're concerned. It's not like you can hear maybe Shane. Shane's got impeccable hearing, but <laughs> you hear one tone and in, when I first got into music theory, I thought tone referred to the sound we're talking about. Jim, just real quick, I seem to Go recall ahead. that, you know, when you say that, you use the telephone as an example. I remember the touch tone phones. And, right. And it was either one, two, three, and it sounded like it was one note. Or it was, it was either that or it was one, four, seven. And then when you went across, it sounded like it added other notes. It, it, it almost like it was a chord. Yeah, you could, 
you could each actually, number has a different tone to it, right? But but each each number has a different type of a tone. Okay. Well, so here's the thing that's important to realize about that is you're you're hearing like one tone, but you know I just told you that for foam we actually use two two sinusoids to create that, and we hear one tone because they're mixed together. It makes sense, right? right. But what, what do we know about that tone? And that's what's important is it's got a basic sound with some extra stuff is a great way to think of it. And in music, when we talk about a note, an A note might be a 440, but it's got some extra sinusoids with it. But we recognize it because that 440 is a fundamental frequency of that note. And that's what gives it its tone. But tone in this case is not referring to the frequency of it, okay? And we talk a lot in music about tonality. And the word tone gets very confusing in frequency because in music theory, because really when we're talking about tone and something we're gonna talk about semitones, we don't, we're really talking about the distance between notes. And that's a lot different than what we're hearing uh, up front. And that's why I said that, uh, that this can be very misleading as far as musical theory is concerned, because in musical theory, it's very strict about tone being the, diff the distance between two notes. And a semitone is really two semitones equal a tone, and that's still two distances added together will give you a tone. Jim, can you say that again? Because, okay, so you're talking like it goes from a, like an A sharp to B flat. So let's talk about going, like we talked in the first, our first meeting, we talked about how the letters of the alphabet were assigned to sound. Okay. And it would probably be a good idea that if we were going to do that, we would just start with the letter A, right? So guess what? The first key on your piano is an A, right? So the next one, a B, and so on, okay? But we're talking about a distance. And so if you were to go from A to B, how much, what is the distance that we really went? And you'll notice that on a piano, that what is, we have black keys and white keys. And we know that all, all keys actually have an assigned note. It's what, we, what we, we talked about in our first session. And it's a labeling and we know that they all sound different. You start from the bottom, you go all the way up to the top, you hear change in frequency, but what about going from A to B? There's actually a black key that's in between them, right? And that, and, and if you feel it with your hands, you'll realize, okay, they didn't extend the black key from the back of the piano all the way to the front, but if they did, you before you could get to that next white B key, you'd have this black key in between. Okay, so let's think about it in terms of distances. You know, if we're going from left to right and we, we go that distance, well, we gotta include that black key. So the distance from the white key to the black key is a semitone. And from okay. the black key to that second white key is another semitone. But if I said, mm -hmm. what is the distance from the white key to the white key, and you know that there's that black key in it, it's still a tone. Tone is in music theory used to, to, to talk about that distance. But it just so happens, like you said, Randy, if you are going from left to right, then you have sharpened the note, so that would be an A sharp. So and what you, would be the distance between the two black keys? Well, That's a great question. That's Excellent. a really good question. Excellent question, yeah. So you go up, let's try to let's try to process through it. So we went 
If we go from an A to the black key, that's a semitone, right? Mm -hmm. If we go from the black key down to the next white key, that is a semitone. So if we go to the, the, the white key to the next black key, if it falls there, that's another semitone. That's actually a distance of a tone. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that the only spots on the piano, and it is a case that we will discuss, is because there's not a black key between every white key on the keyboard. Jim, and if, and if more will be revealed, I can hold the thought, but it sounds like you're describing steps and half steps. I am, that's exactly what I'm, I'm, I'm okay. discussing. And the reason I brought up tones and semitones to begin with is that we're eventually going to talk about chords. And it's all going to be in terms of, of whole steps and half steps. Mm -hmm. A tone is equivalent to a whole step. And a semitone is equivalent to a half step. But if you go and you look and you YouTube and you read about this stuff, you'll find that it's a, it's a mismatch of a lot of people talking about either tones, semitones. I've, I've heard semitones and whole steps. I've, turned, I've heard tones and half steps. And it's a very confusing point for a lot of people that are trying to understand it. Absolutely. And, and, and that's why, I, and that was one of the reasons I, I pushed forward about talking about this stuff was to, so to clarify, you know, what are we talking about when we're talking about tones, semitones, and honestly, I would rather refer to all of them as whole steps and half steps. But, you know, if, if you go to, to learn more about something and you hear those terms, you are now familiar with what they're talking about. And when you get into certain types of, uh, uh, certain scales and intervals and things like that, which we're going to talk to you hear about shortly, you'll find that that terminology will come up. And so uh, I wanted people to be aware of it. Tones and semitones. Jim, would it be fair to say that this discussion so far is really describing the relationship between you know, nope. what is a tone and then, and then the relationship between uh, separate tones? Well, yeah. And, you know, like I said, here's one of those perfect examples of we, we talk about tones. And as we all know them, like I talked about the uh, I'm trying to adjust my speaker so I can hear you better. You there? Yes, yeah. I'm here. No, we left already. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I. Juan's here. He joined. Hi, Juan. I got a headphone that's being kind of fun. So when we, tones, to most people, mean sound. And in this instance of tones and semitones, where we talk about, you know, it, as far as music nomenclature, is referring to distance. And, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that people don't get confused of, of that very thing. It's easy, it's easy to do. So Jim, so, uh, go ahead. back to Melody's question about the distance between the two black keys. It's a semitone, right? Yeah, it's, if you go from, well, you know, uh, you probably know Shane that, <laughs> that going from A to B wasn't the greatest example because you're going to hit where there is a half step. But black keys are either going to be, uh, well, what's it going to be? A, a, sem a, a tone or more apart, right? Uh, as far as where they, they fall on the keyboard. Because if you go to, if you go between let, let's, can we leave that for a minute till I discuss the C major scale? And then when we get there, we'll go back to the keyboard. Sounds and good. Mm -hmm. Does that work for everybody? That works. 
uh, because there are uh, there are things that, that we need to discuss a, about that as far as half steps and whole steps. I just wanted to bring forward the, the, the tones and the semitones, and we had talked about octaves. And one thing that uh, I didn't talk about was, I didn't talk about harmonics, uh, but those are just, like I, I said in the beginning when I talked about uh, the tones, the dual tone telephone that has actual two tones. Yeah. And I said that, that there is actually one harmonic there. And harmonics are those extra little components all put together with the, that fundamental frequency to make up the note. And what I want people to remember is that every note that you hear on your instrument has one frequency that is pretty obvious to our ear, but those other harmonics, those other little components that come along with it change depending on the instrument, change depending on who's singing it, because those harmonics are what give it that extra, extra color, we say, or texture. Uh, we, we know that an A note is 440 hertz. That's the frequency of an A note. It doesn't mean we can't play it an octave down or an octave up. It's, you know, we can. We can go to 220. We can go to 110 like on a guitar. That's an open A string. But it's the fundamental frequency is what we mainly remember. Uh, if we even remember what the frequency is at all. But if they all are 440 hertz, if I play an A on a piano at 440 hertz and I play one on a guitar, we know that they sound different. Not in the basic frequency of it, but in its color uh, or just the way it sounds. If you play it on a flute, right? So you get all these different A's so what makes them different in the way we hear them, even though they all have that really meaty part that we say is its fundamental frequency, and that is because of what some people will call harmonics. And those are all the little extra pieces that come along with when you pluck that A, you pluck that A or you hit that A on the piano. So yeah. Yeah. go ahead. Hey, I've I've heard the word tonality. Is is that what you're describing? Is that another word for this? That that is another word for this. Okay, thank you. You know, and and a lot of times we talk about tonality when we get to more than one note. But this is a perfect example of what you know really tonality is based on. Is that that extra? You know, we call this timbre how the flavor of a, yeah, so of a note, but, color. and the color, the but temperature. the temperature, we, we have all kinds of, of ways of thinking about it. And, and that's where I think we can get, we can get lost in, in our understanding of it. And so for the purpose of this discussion, those extra components that, that come along with the base frequency of any note, which is what we call the fundamental frequency, is harmonics. Those are all the extra components. And where we stand right here, are we, are we together on that? Is there any, how are we doing, Melody? I'm getting it, yeah. You getting it? So, yeah. because eventually we're gonna talk primarily about notes. Notes and distances, right? And mm -hmm. the, the stuff that we're kind of going over is kind of gets lost, but there are times that those words will come back up, like in the case of harmonic minor and things like that. You're going to see these words appear again as we go further. And mm -hmm. I want to be able to draw back on what I told you in the beginning of really what it was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and and like as far as t 
tones and semitones. Uh, so with that, let me see. Let me look at my note here. I think our next spot is to 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 talk about. I want to introduce introduce the the first scale, which is going to be the C major scale. I'd like to discuss that tonight, and and depending on how much time we have, we'll get into that a little bit. Uh, how are we doing on time, Randy? Do you have a The time is 625 p.m. Which is at 645? 625. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah Randy left. <laughs> okay, so so we we still have we still have some good time. I'm so, still here, sorry. Okay, so last discussion I talked about this this labeling of keys. And we started at A. And really, uh, there's, we're going to start with the C major scale because there's something unique about it. Uh, number one, uh, C is the middle key in a keyboard. If we split the, the, uh, the piano in half, that middle key would be the C. And they call that uh, middle C. I kind of think of it as home row but I'm a computer user, so uh, that would be the, the home row. <laughs> but it, mm -hmm. it's called middle C, and uh, if you, you know, remember I, I said in the, our very first, first meeting that there are seven notes in any major scale, okay? And after the seventh note, we hit the eighth note. Well, what's unique about eight? octa right it's an octave the eighth note so if we counted through the notes starting on c we'd go c d e f g a b c it just repeats and it repeats both directions if we were to do it backwards we'd still end up on c and with our discussion we talked about you know really what's happening. It's a, it's a double of the fundamental frequency and we get to the octave. Okay, so here's the, here's the reason that we start with the C major scale is it's all on the white keys of the keyboard because we know there's some unique characteristics of the C major scale. It has no sharps, and no flats. And in our, in, when I introduced the black key on the keyboard, and I said, if you go, you know, between that A and the B, I said, there's that black key, okay? And if I did that, the same thing is if I did it at the, starting on C in the middle of the keyboard, the next key, the white key is gonna be a D. Well, there's a black key in between it. And I'm gonna just stick with the C major scale rather than try to flip back and forth when I, the only reason I started with A was because we were talking about uh, how sounds got assigned letters. But I'm gonna just leave that as is. And we're gonna talk about the home row, middle C, and that's where we're gonna take it off from now on. And, and we're gonna talk a lot about this C major scale, because that's gonna be the basis of most of what I teach in, in this, this class, because I have found a way to transpose that C major scale through all the keys. Jim, a question. Yeah. So you keep referring to it as middle C. What does that mean? And does it have anything to do with octaves? No, it has everything to do with the, the, the that key. The distance of that key is right in the middle. Of the keyboard? Of, of the, the actual keyboard. Physical, okay, okay. The actual physical spot is where. And, gotcha. of course, there's, you know, there's other characteristics that, other reasoning that goes behind it. And one of the things that you had brought to my attention 
was do we really need to know why they chose middle C? There, there's reasons behind that, but I don't want to get into that. I want to get, get going with the notes. When and you say middle C, though, you're talking about the C on the keyboard. In the middle, yes. Gotcha. And so if we start at C and we go, whenever I say go, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about from left to right. And if you were moving from left to right on the keyboard and you go from C to D, in between those two keys is a black key. And I know that since I'm going from left to right, I would call that black key a C sharp. Okay? Are you with me, Melody? I'm yeah, going from left to right. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, then I'm still going from left to right and I go from C sharp and I hit D uh, and everything's good. But if I were to back up. That's a flat, right? That becomes a flat. Okay, see. And so, so I could say that that black key is either C sharp or D flat. Two names for one key. Two names for one note. Mm -hmm. You with us, Randy? I'm thinking about the comment I made earlier about the A sharp and B flat, and it, that doesn't exist. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, it does. It, it does. Does it? Think about it. Go A to A, A, A to black key. And then that next key that you're going to hit is going to be a B, right? And so then when you go backwards, you go backwards, yeah. it'd be a so B there's, flat. There's no B. There's no B sharp and no C flat. Right. Okay. 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 I, right. I was but off. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. and and that's kind of the that's where we're going. So we're marching from left to right, and we start. But we recognize that that uh, a black key can either be called a sharp or a flat, and it has everything to do with which direction you're going. If you're, if you're going from right to left, the black keys are always called flat. If you're going from left to right, it's always called sharp. It has to do with which way you're traveling. Make sense? Mm -hmm. so, so as we go, we're, we're gonna continue this discussion from left to right. So we okay. go. To, so there would be no E sharp then, right? No, there isn't. And those are the, there's. You'll notice that as we go through this scale, I said something very unique about the uh, C major scale is that it has no sharps and no flats. Mm -hmm. But we know that key exists. The black key exists between them. But the C major scale is played all on the white keys. But there's some, there's some unique properties about it because you're gonna find an area as you go along the keyboard that there's two white keys and no black key in between them. So even if you wanted to play a black key, you couldn't. And that's unique to the C major hey, scale. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us where on the scale there's the location that um, that half step is going to be? Because um, it's in a certain spot, right? Third and fourth and seventh and eighth, right? It's between... Oh, the, oh, the that there's right. not going to be a black key. There's not going to be a black key. And, and yes, that's a very good point. Uh, is that in the C major scale, uh, there's two spots that you're not going to have a black key. And that's gonna be between B and C and E and F. And remember we started C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C is the octave. So there is no black key between B and C and E and F. You understand that melody? Yeah, you... I got that. Okay, yeah. so let's do something right now. Let's just label for, because this is an important part. We're gonna label it from one to seven. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, that's it. Uh, C is one, you know, D is two, 
E is three, and so on. Mm -hmm. And that might be something that, that you want to write down. Some people just remember it. But those numbers that I'm giving to each of these notes, note C is a one, and two, D is a two, E is a three, F is a four, G is a five, K is a six, B is a seven. The obvious, Did everybody get that? The, yeah. ob the obvious question is, <laughs> what are the black keys? How do you describe those? You're on the C scale. There are no black keys, right? There are no there black are keys. no black keys. Okay. We'll okay. get I, to I, that. I'm jumping ahead. Okay. You're jumping ahead. We'll get to the okay. black keys. Sorry. Good catch, Melody. Thank you. You know, but you're trying it, to confuse me. <laughs> hey, and me. No, you're, you're no, good. I'm I'm getting overexcited. Sorry, I just need to go over. Sorry. <laughs> Will this Zoom call be um, recorded for later playback? It is, and it will be uh, uploaded to YouTube within the week. Because I want to show some people, like Angel and some other people. Cool. So we started, we put down this number system. Is everybody with me? Yes. And uh, those numbers are important because we're going to use those numbers throughout all our discussions. Anytime we discuss a scale, we know all scales have seven notes and we will get to, there are some, some strange exceptions, but the basis of everything we, we, we play is based on seven note scales. Okay. So, those, those note numbers uh, become really important when we, when we go to build chords. Because eventually we want to build chords with multiple notes, not just play one note. Those are also referred to as uh, the, the distance between those notes, any two of those notes we call an interval. Do you remember, Randy, you were asking me the uh, earlier when we were gonna get to intervals. Oh yeah. And that's why I brought up tones and I brought up semitones and I brought up distances because when we're talking about intervals, which is the distance between two notes, then that number in system comes into big play. Okay. And just, just to satisfy my curiosity, I'm assuming when we explore other scales, we'll talk about how to describe the semitones or black keys. Oh yes. Okay. Oh yes. We, we will get there. So here's, here's something that I want to state that, that will never change. And that is an interval is the distance between the root note, which is always number one, and the, the number, uh, the note, any note that you pick in that scale. That's what we're referring to as an interval. So if I go to, if I, I would refer to a third would be between the one and the third note. That's a third. Now the type of third it is will vary, but it'll never not be a third. Okay. All the, all the uh, interval numbers are always referred to the same way. A lot of times you'll hear, a fifth. Well, what is a fifth? It's that distance between the first and, and that fifth note. So it would be like the distance between the C and the G. 
Exactly. That's a fifth. Okay. Great example, Melody. Thank you. <laughs> the distance between the first and the third, that's a third. And you know, that will you'll you'll get you'll get stronger at how to think about it because you know right now we're dealing with a scale that has no sharps and no flats, no black keys. But if there were a scale that had black keys in it, then we'd also know that that note that falls on that third note in that scale, we will still call a third. And that fifth note in that scale, we will still call a fifth. Okay, it will never change. So that's why we numbered them. So what did change? What changed if, if I were to change the scale and add, I know it's a major, it's a, either any kind of scale, we're gonna have seven notes for practical purposes. So if I change something, I can't change the number. I can never change the number. So what could change? Well, what would have to change to add the black key? The note, right? It's flat or it's sharp. I, I, I don't know. The number of semitones or tones. That's why I brought up distance because the distance, the, so the number of semitones would change because you you had to remember you had to step up on left to right you had to step up to that black key and okay. then back down so from c to c sharp is a half step that's a half step but from c sharp c to d is another half step correct but from c to d is a full step so that's how right. do you describe other than saying half step what what's what's you're, you're onto it, Randy. It's really so. But but earlier you said you you had pointed out: is it going up the scale or is it coming down? In other words, is it going left up or right? You know, which direction are you heading? Right. So let me right? clarify that. Remember that, <clears throat> and I and we took off pretty fast here because I said that, you know, there's a couple things I I was pretty concrete about. Number one was the number. I said let's not lose. That's never going to change. We're going to stay with the number. And number mm -hmm. two was. Uh, labeling of the keys is there there's two names for a black key okay so those things you know will never change we might call it an a sharp or we might call it a b flat those things aren't going to change they're always going to have the same label how do you know which one to call it though Depending because you're on, like back and forth right that's Depending, right Melody's on, right. on your progression as the notes as you're playing them Right, and I found that, you know, even playing with other guitarists, that for some reason they hate to call things flat. Yeah. So they call it all sharps. Okay. And it's pretty common in guitar that a lot of people re refer to it as sharps. And in fact, sometimes I, you know, I'll do the same thing because I'm, I'm more used to what sharps it is that, you know, that I forget to say, hey, that's a such and such flat, you know. Uh, right. It's, and, so and is in that this case, where augmented and diminished come in? Uh, I've heard no. those words before. No? Okay. Then scratch but, that. Sorry. But, hey, look, it, 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 goes, it goes that diminished really means flat. Okay. It's, and it is a that's half step. What, that's what I've always associated it with when, it, when I listen to Rick Beato. And so. augmented, <laughs> augmented means raise a half step. But raise okay. a half step of what? You, that's where a lot of the confusion comes in. And when we talk about chords, we're going to talk about a one, a three, a five, mm -hmm. those numbers, those numbers mm -hmm. that we're going to keep coming back to oh, yeah. labeling that C scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and when we go to make chords, we'll talk about augmented chords diminished. There are multiple ways people talk about things, and that was one of the emphasis in tonight's talk is about, you know, look at, there's going to be ways that you will hear things that, that don't are not all consistent. 
And I'm trying to be consistent about how we, we talk about the nomenclature, right? So, so we're talking C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C is an octave. Actually, that was eight notes. But if we go to B, okay. e, that's seven. And we know the half steps are where? Melody, where are the half steps? The black keys, right? So the black keys. But in that C scale, that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, do you oh. know between what two notes? They're between one and two, uh, two and three, three and four. There's no black key no. between five and six. No, there's okay. no flat key between three and four. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm off. But yeah, I get it. I think. And so we re remember in our in B and C, numbers, right? There's none between B and C. Correct. And there's right. one other spot. What, you had it right when you said between three and four. That's E and F. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter where you play an E and an F on a keyboard, on a guitar, anywhere. There's not anything for us to play in between those two. Yeah. Doesn't matter the instrument. There's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So between, and that's something that you just got to kind of grind in your head. Uh, B, C, E, F are half steps. Okay. So James, can I uh, anyway. ask something that, um, so when we're talking, going back to the, um, you talked about distance, right? Right. So distance between two notes or two tones. And so we're talking about the distance between C and D. That's a whole tone. Am I right? That's right. It's the, and, and in music there, they call it a tone. But, you know, and if you were to go between C and D, you could say that's two semitones, right? Or you could say the distance between C and D is a tone. Uh, or you could say the distance between C and D is a whole step, like you just said, or the distance between C and D is two half steps. They all are the same way of describing that distance between C and D. And I brought up tone and, and semitones because there are some spots that, that it will, you know, it'll, it, there will be some more discussion, but all through my playing and learning it, I've always, always referred to most of it as whole steps and half steps. And a whole step is two semitones and at, uh, but it's also considered a tone. How are we doing, Melody? You got that? Yeah, it's almost like uh, quarters and dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good, okay. good analogy. But here's the thing that's, that's kind of great about remembering the C major scale is number one, it doesn't have the scale itself, doesn't have any sharps and flats. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we talk about those distances, we can figure out pretty quick that even though there is a black key between C and D, which we would be C sharp or D flat, What's unique about the C major scale is that we don't hit any of those keys. We just go on the white keys. So that is the C major scale. But there's something that we can learn from it. And I'll show you that any scale that you want to construct, any scale, will have actually, as far as major scales, will all have the same distances as the C major scale. There will always be a whole step between notes one and two and a whole step between notes two and three, a half step between three and four and so on. 
And if you use that, once you figure that's the one you got to remember, if you just, if you're going to do any memorization, you got to remember where the half steps are in that C major scale and where the whole steps are. Because once you get there, you can apply those distances starting on any scale that you want to start on. If I were to do it on, start on D and do a D major scale, so I'm playing in the key of D, guess what? If I apply those same distances, you're right. It'll be the right scale. And sometimes those, you'll, you'll realize that, oh, wow, to keep that whole step, you know, right in a scale, I, I got to, you know, I, I might have to go to the black keys at times. Because remember that always a whole step is two half steps. Well, what if it starts on a black key? Well, you're going to end up having to go to a white key back up to a black key. That's all step. It's two semitones, two half steps. So the one to remember is C. Okay. Did I did I lose anybody? No, I got it. Rand man. He's asleep. No, I, no, 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 no. He's eating no. again, aren't you? No, I'm here. I'm, 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 um, I'm having a lot of questions that pop up, and I'm really, really trying not to ask to jump ahead and cause confusion. So, um. Well, right now, I hear a lot of this verbiage, Jim, and so that's how I come up with some of it. And so I just really appreciate the the uh, chance to clarify. Okay, well, we're all we're at six fifty, and I don't want to. The last thing I want to do is convolute all of this, right? So I got to the C major scale, and it's something I'm going to refer to from here probably to the end because there's so much to learn from that scale as far as how, how to come up with all your other scales without having to, to go look them up. And that's may how I, I've done it. May I ask one question? Cause this is going to drive me nuts for the next week. Oh, any, any question. Why is it called major? Why is it not called minor or let, let's just stick with that. Why, what <laughs> distinguishes what could you said earlier, you said it's a C major scale and there's, it's basically, there's no well, sharps and no flats. So I'm gonna why is that, it major? Well, here's something that you know that. I don't that know that I know. I, I, yeah, I don't want to make assumptions. Just minor scales sound darker. Okay. Major scales sound brighter. They all have to do with, with uh, distances. Okay. And I'm going to, and we're going to really get into that and, and, or, or the actual note they start on. So the minor scale, I'm not going to go into the minor scale, especially tonight, but just know that it has to do with distances. And that's why I had to get us to this point of talking about uh, those interval numbers and those distances. Well, we're going to spend a lot of time at looking at those distances and what happens if we decide to change them a little bit. That's where you're going to see minor. Okay. But for right now, let's stick with C. Uh, C is, I mean, yes, you could have a C minor, but this is C major. It's okay. no sharps, no flats. Okay. Anytime you go to minor, Guess what? You're going to get sharps and flats. There's sharps and flats, I'm assuming. Yeah. So the C major scale is all, there are no sharps and no flats. And we, we kind of know, we already know that what a minor key presumably sounds like, because if you hit a black key, you'll know that there's something that sounds a little darker about it, right? Yeah. There's, you know, so, so you're familiar with the sound already. And we're going to really dive into, you know, all of that. But our home row is going to be the C major scale. That sounds pretty, pretty bright. And 
uh, we're going to tweak it. And, and that's what I'm going to show you is how to tweak it and what you get when you do. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, I got it. Still, you still together, Shane? Absolutely. <laughs> any any comments you would like to make? No, uh, no. I I I think uh, uh, if, if Randy, if if you want to talk uh, major minor scales afterward uh offline so you can sleep well tonight uh, you know we can do that <laughs> it is bothering me well yeah. we i think it's some kind of pattern because you kept referring to you said one three five earlier and it's like why is he not saying one two three four five so I, right. you know I, I i take this as a language to describe what you're playing so we can work together so yeah it's oh. it is it does intrigue me <laughs> Okay. So well, when you say one, two, three, four, five, that's a C major, a C minor, right? Well, just uh, just remember that the basic building blocks of of chords are really three notes, and that that what you refer to as minor is really uh, I didn't want I didn't want to, to go into. There's so many pieces of it, and the basics that I wanted you to remember was. The numbers I just assigned to the to the notes that we have, mm -hmm. and that uh, yeah I talked about a one three five, which is the one note which would be a C, the three note which would be an E, and the five which would be a G, and that's actually a C chord and it's not a minor chord it's a one three five, but you know it. If you have a C minor, it still always starts with a one, but something always happens to the three and they flat it and it makes it a minor chord. It's those kind of manipulations that we're gonna do and we're gonna learn that, that how to make minor chords and it's not just a simple, it's not a simple explanation without bringing more into it. Uh, although Shane, you might have yes. a, a better way of Describing it, I know you're familiar with minor minor uh, keys too. So, I was trying to stay with the C major scale to get through discussing <laughs> intervals because really, what makes you know any chord uh, is is intervals, and we got to get to that, and then we can talk about relationships in scales. So. Yep. Yeah, well, uh, it's it sounds to me like it makes sense to stick with the uh, Absolutely. curriculum and yeah. and uh, unveil it uh, as you wish, piece by piece, right? I mean, listen. There's, I'm definitely up for input. You know, it, this is it, it. It gets it gets crazy pretty quick, and I'm trying to handle it slow because uh, I don't want to over. I don't want to confuse everybody. Yeah, because yeah. I heard of what Randy was saying. I never heard the one, three, five, but I knew what Randy was talking about. But now you're putting them all together, and I'm confused. Well, I need to go one I, step at a time. Well, right. So I want to stay with the C major scale. There is a reason they call it major, and and I, I don't want to get into that tonight. Got it. But but honestly, there's all those notes are 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 part of the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I've watched too much Rick Beato. <laughs> Who's he? Oh, that. Oh, yeah. I heard him. Yeah, and it's you that, hear a lot of these. You know, like one, three, five. The phrase. You know, you hear that. Well, that's that's standard in pop music, and it's like, well, what does that mean? So, um, more will be revealed. And I apologize if I'm um, causing too much interruption. No, not at all. But no. just for now, let's just stay with the major. <laughs> We're gonna make it minor. Uh, and we're, you know, and, and you see is when you're in keys, when you're, we talk about keys and it all comes down to, to that, that the timbre of the sound, the ton tonality, you know, the, the feel of, of a key. Because and, when it's out of key, it just doesn't sound right. Right. And if you were to 
be playing in the key of C and you decided that you were going to play a C minor, which is a key, but is also a chord. That's not in the key of C. That just changed the whole mood, though. That's right. I mean, and seriously, that just changed the whole emotion of what you were conveying. What, playing from, from the major scale, from the C major scale? I don't know. Somebody just went from one note, and it made me feel one way, and as you were describing it, was that you, Melody? No, it must be Shane. Well, that must be Shane. Okay. Well, oh, whoever... I'm sorry. I, I thought I was keeping the... Uh... No, that's fine. Oh, far away enough. But that's but but sh thanks, Shane, because it just because I tie I tie what sh what Jim is describing. I tie I tie music into emotion. How does it make me feel? Mm -hmm. And when you just played and hit as he was talking, when you hit the second note, I just mm -hmm. my whole emotion in in color or whatever j just completely changed. Right, and he did not he did not play a note in. In the uh, in the C major scale, the, yeah. I didn't say that didn't okay. sound like a C though, was it? So, so would it be fair to say that if you're playing in key or you're playing in the same scale, it tends to keep the same vibe or the same emotion mood? or yes, or mood? Yeah, I think mood's actually yes. a better word. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and, so then, and then so those changes happen when you change the key. And certain uh, okay. notes, there's, okay. you know, I, I gave you seven notes. Right. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. <laughs> but you sure. didn't throw no flats or sharps in there either. Yeah. I didn't throw any uh, yeah. flats or sharps. Yeah. yeah. But okay. you're, we're going to find that certain notes and certain chords have mm -hmm. characteristics that make you feel like you need to go to a next note. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's all part of where they fall. And those notes, by the way, they call... The, sta the scale degree, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's another terminology people use. But they're all talking about these notes, notes of, the, of a scale. And we're starting with the C major scale, and we're going we're gonna to tweak it, you know? And we're going to answer questions like, well, what's the difference between C major and C minor? And it just turns out that C major is the the only scale on that keyboard that doesn't have any black keys. That's it. Okay, so that sounds like a basic fundamental place to start. And it just, it just intrigues me. <laughs> well, keep it, it intrigued. It, Melody, are you intrigued? Yeah, it is kind of- I want to know more. <laughs> and it's like, cause it's like what I learned, it's like, it was just so different from what I, yeah, it, it does, and it kind of explains some of the terminology and maybe even so why you know, things you, sound the way they do. If you play that C major scale, remember, it, it's all the same, no matter what what octave you're playing. If you started right. at 440, yep. well, C is not 440, but let's say that you were down at the left side of the keyboard and you started on C and you're playing notes between those seven notes we just talked. Right. And then you decided to jump up to, you know, much higher on the keyboard. That's all good. It all yeah, fits. yeah. if it's in key, that, 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 that doesn't key. work. But there's times when you hit the wrong key and it's horrible. <laughs> right. And, yeah. and that, yeah. that's going to yeah. be a great... It's you know, dissonance. <laughs> it is. It, yeah. it, it yeah. definitely is. And that's going to be the, the, uh, the focus of our, our next lesson. Randy's Black Keys. <laughs> <laughs> I just, dude, it, it's a trip when you play like the keyboard, and, and I don't have any formal training, but you can go up one, two, you know, up the mm -hmm. up the white keys, and that's fine. But when you start to incorporate the black keys, you notice that certain combinations work and certain combinations don't, and mm -hmm. they'll make you feel, I at least me, almost temp almost temperature and mood. Depending all on great how you, ways of how you describing, arrange. yeah, they're all great ways of describing uh, what you can do with with the musical language. It's and there's reasons that you 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 want to go to like a fifth because it's going to make people want to go back to a one. Those are all those predictions I told you that 
that gotcha. you see music all the time. And, and there's going to be a time that you you want that's... you want to go dark, you want to go black keys. Those are all all things that 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 are that are great to do. And and we're starting on just that bright, cheery sure. C major scale. But it's weird because it's it, this is what makes it possible for a group of strangers to sit in a room and play together. Right. <laughs> and even if you don't know the verbiage or the nomenclature, you can feel it and hear it. And yeah, this is cool. And if you, if I say, look at I'm playing in the key of C, which, you know, one thing, a C is going to be pretty safe, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can't go wrong. Yeah. You're not going to mess around. A C is going to be pretty safe. What else is going to be pretty safe? That's the stuff we're going to get into because you're going to know, well, you know already the seven notes that are in that scale for the key of C. So uh, if I'm going to play in the key of C, you're going to have a good idea where you can go. Perfect. Yeah, that's just good. So what instruments do you play, Shane? Uh, nothing really well. Uh, I have a <laughs> I have a keyboard here that's identical to the one that we have in the music room at the agency. Mm -hmm. uh, I've only had it home here for a month and I ha I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I, I play they a little, are bit fun, of aren't they? <laughs> little, little bit of guitar, but uh, I'm very rusty. I'm but hoping that I'll get better uh, with some practice. What about the quartet? And, the, and uh, yeah, come on, Shane, don't be so modest. Don't you sing in barbershop? Oh, oh really? well, Mel, Mel, yeah, Melody, he's right. I, I my, don't be modest. Most, Come on. most, most of my uh, music uh, background is in singing. So when I was in, when I was in I high school, I bet you're a tenor, aren't you? Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I sang tenor and baritone. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I sang all the parts at one time or another. But, um, but yeah, I did a lot of choral singing in high school and college, and then I did some musical theater and opera in college and then when i graduated from college some guys for a while i majored in music at uc davis and uh some of the guys that uh the other music majors started a jazz quartet and uh piano bass drums and alto sax and at one point i uh got together and sang with them so we we gigged a little bit in the bay area doing jazz you know, this is back that in the is 90s. Cool. Yeah, it was fun. But I haven't done any kind of music with any kind of consistency for many, many, many years. So I'm hoping to get back into it. Mm -hmm. Guys, if it's okay, well, and Shane, I don't mean to put the spotlight on you or embarrass you in any way. Um, yeah, but you do. <laughs> I, no, no, I don't. And I mean this with, with, with utmost sincerity. Uh, a few years ago, you know, Shane's my boss. Um, but a few years ago, we, we were at a holiday um, party for the company, for the agency, and Shane and Liz Campos performed. And, you know, I always see Shane as, as this formal, you know, he's my supervisor. And, and, and Not a fun person. But he became a performer. <laughs> it was amazing. It was incredible, that transition, Shane. And, and I've never had a chance to tell you this. But I was really, that's always stuck out with me. You became this other stage presence and just was a professional performer. And, and, and um, I took a lot of cues from what you did that night. Um, thank you. Oh, well, that was a lot of fun. And what was fun about that night, too, was that we had a technical glitch, right? And, and and your your mastery of the recovery of that was just oh my god that's that's a lesson you could teach. Okay, so uh, now personally. you have to sing for me, Shane. Oh, right, the second. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Shane, Maybe next time. Can, can okay, you tell, I'm happy to do it. Can you tell about the technically? Basically, Melody, I paused the music right in the middle of the song, and just crashed the whole party. And <laughs> Shane's ability to recover that was just. Oh my God! It was incredible. It was a it was professional. Somebody you would see on NBC or it was yeah. Thank you, Shane, because you saved my ass that night. <laughs> well, you know, it's moments like that that uh, 
that people remember and enjoy the most. Uh, I, uh, I've had so many mishaps over the years in performances and, uh, you just keep going. Yeah. You keep going and, and you, you, uh, you make it part of the act. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. Because people love it when you screw up. And if you, if you have fun with it, they will too. Mm -hmm. And it ends up being some of the best performances because you, you rolled so well. And I think, I think people, you know, when you perform, I'm sure that you feel like everybody's critiquing, you know, but especially when people are just having fun and something happens like that, it, <coughs> people remember, you know, there's uh, a guy, super cool. there's a guy I watch on YouTube. His name is Adam Neely and he's a jazz bassist. And he says, oh. you know, if you're at a gig and you screw up and you hit a wrong note, just, just, you know, repeat it three times and they'll think it's part of your repertoire. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. They think, they think it's yeah. part of the act. Uh, Make it your own. Yeah. yeah. It's how you recover from it. That makes it good. For sure. Okay. So Shane, I'm going to hold you to it. Next class, you got to sing that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> So, Jimmy, you want to set the agenda for next week? Uh, yeah, I think we'll. I think a good thing to discuss for next week. We will. We will discuss uh, some of the minor stuff a little bit. Some of the questions that you had, and I'll put together uh, and email you the next kind of topics that we'll just we'll we'll cover. Okay. So it's going to be next. Go through this, yeah, it'll be. Well, I've been doing them every two weeks because. Uh, yeah, but well, he said kinda... next week. So, oh, yes. So, two weeks. Next Jim, week, we're going to do this in two weeks, correct? Yeah. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Juan, are you still here? I heard him exit. I heard okay. him exit. He came back in he and comes out. comes and goes, yeah. Got it. Got it. Um, so, in two weeks, we'll be on. Uh, folks, I'll have this uploaded to YouTube in a link out. The The first uh, lesson is up. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have this one edited and up within, by, by Monday, okay? If you didn't receive a link from me, let me know, and I will, I'll, I'll get it um, out to you. Okay. okay. Jimmy, it's your class. And I will, uh, I did, I sent that that uh, I did it on guitar, of course, uh, but maybe I can uh, get maybe Juan to echo what I did on piano uh, or I, that, that scale uh, melody was the C major scale that I played, you know, but that you, played. List, oh, but that you sent me on a, that email? I sent you just, I just want you to match notes you know, get comfortable mm -hmm. with matching those notes. But you did it on the guitar, though. I did it on the guitar, but that's, it's good to hear. The magic is when you can repeat that on a different instrument. <laughs> right. And and that was kind of our, part of our discussion tonight about it. it's still a C note, mm -hmm. and you're hearing that, that bass fundamental frequency of it. Yeah, but there all are those, the other stuff. All the other stuff that come with yep. it. And, you know, that's something that, like I said, we'll we'll talk more about, but but it's still a C note, and uh, they sound different on, but they're still close. You know, they sound different on different instruments. Can Shane, I'll go over it. I'll start making sure I don't. I'll check my junk mail from now on. I, I if you all don't mind, I'd like to ask Shane a question. Sure. Shane, are you there? Yes, sir. So, you've you've played with upright pianos and in that environment correct with, acoustic, uh, with actual organic acoustic instruments you're talking yeah both uprights and uh and, grand, correct, and, and, correct and and that mini grands that had strings and a soundboard and all that stuff built. in fact in fact i actually spent a time starting to learn how to become a piano tuner you know gerald carter used to do that <laughs> That's, that was you can I make think, you can make very good money tuning yeah. pianos. That man had an amazing ear. He's the only one I've seen close to you. Um, the reason why I ask is now you're playing on. A, I think you're playing on a Yamaha D45. Are you noticing? Right. A, and and this kind of ties into what 
what Jim was talking about earlier as, as opposed to a fundamental tone. And then the other add-on stuff, the ambiance. Are you talking? Yeah. And I, I, I think. So do when you notice talking, a difference? Well, I, I think what Jim was talking about earlier and Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, because I could be um, the secondary tones or notes that you hear when you strike a key on a piano. Those are sometimes called overtones. They're yeah. Called overtones or yeah. they're yeah. Called, called harmonics. Cause really. Right. Okay. Cause the drum are, does the same thing. They're so, multiples of that fundamental. So uh, right. that's how they relate to each other as gotcha. far as overtones. But what do you hear and what, you know? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I, I, my hearing is really strange because I got two things going on. One, I have perfect pitch which is actually in the brain, not the ear. It's, it's, it's the way the brain identifies the frequency of a note, basically, right? right. The pitch. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm able to remember the exact pitch that I hear something played, right? Without having to hear a reference tone. Right. Yeah, he doesn't right. have relative. He just, can just, hear... cold, just from the cold, he can say. Yeah, yeah. So if I, if, I strike, if I strike a key randomly. Yeah. You know, that's uh, if I strike a key randomly, like I just just did, that's a B flat or an A sharp, depending on your point of view, right? Right. So, um, yeah, I, I can identify what I hear, and that that's that's genetic, and it's fairly rare, you know. It's, um, it's very rare. But the funny thing is, I also have moderate hearing loss. I always have. You know, I wear hearing aids. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, he's got an app strange. for his hearing aids that, yeah. that <laughs> sorry Shane. yeah so the prop yeah so the <laughs> it, it, is, yeah it's strange okay. yeah, so, the, so, the, so while i can i can hear the tone i can hear it and i process it you know if it's loud enough um i have a hard time hearing subtleties like overtones sometimes i can Oh, sometimes I can't. And the other thing I've noticed about hearing aids is hearing aids create their own harmonics. So mm -hmm. what you hear with a hearing aid is not necessarily what you'd hear with a good natural ear. And they have noise cancellation. Oh yeah, there's yeah, yeah. it's it's there's it's, stuff that so, gets cut off. Well, so, something that, that we talked about, Randy and I, because we talked about perfect pitch, and I said, you know, I wonder if I were to study Shane. And that's yeah. exactly what I said. I, <laughs> we I said, talk I about wonder, you, Shane. <laughs> I, I said if I studied Shane and I actually were able to to assign, you know, magnitudes to all those harmonics, where you hear the harmonics as far as you're hearing, and I would I said I would venture to guess that they're suppressed and gave you much better uh, focus on your on fundamental, the fundamental, yeah. Uh, that gave you, and that's genetic. I mean, when did you know that you had perfect pitch? How old were you? This is turning into um, an interview. Well, <laughs> when it became when it became um, apparent that it was something special. Well, I had a in the fourth grade. The band teacher came around to all the classes um, on the first day of school and, and gave a tonality test. He was trying to recruit uh, members for the band, right? Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. that, that they would, he would play a note, and he'd ask you to describe it as high, medium, or low. We, yeah, I remember it just, that. There, it was just a very basic relative, relative pitch that, question. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I got a hundred percent on it. It was just very mm -hmm. easy for me. And he he spent the next four years trying to get me into his little. <laughs> into his band, uh, which I never joined, but not because I didn't want to, but uh, I had more to do with my dad and his preferences. But um, yeah, yeah. But in high school, when I joined the chorus my freshman year and uh, sang in a choir, then I realized that I was the only one that, that could tell like when we were going flat and, and uh, you know, if we were going to sing it. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I don't mean I don't mean that awful sound, but I mean even uh, if it was just slightly that the rest of the room didn't catch. Yeah, he could, he could tell Randy. He could tell when one person okay. was off key. 
Got yeah, and, yeah, and, but, you, but yeah. worse is that I could stay on TV when other people went off. That's yeah, and then they would think that they I was were annoyed. Yeah, that's you. annoying. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, they. Gotcha. Yeah, my. In fact, my my choir teacher used to get mad at me because because <laughs> you made the best of the band sound bad. Right, right. So yeah, I had yeah. to learn to just go with the flow, and I <laughs> later on, as 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 you know, he the teacher and others began to realize as I explained, yeah. then some, they began to kind of use me like a pitch pipe, you know, like when we had yeah. a barbershop quartet, we didn't need a pitch pipe because I would just hum the opening note. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's cool. all we needed. So I was kind of a human pitch pipe. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> what note did you hum? Well, it depended on the song. Yeah, no, right. I get that. But if you were to just naturally hum. Yeah. I wanted to ask the you, same question because I, I've, been taught that most people naturally hum an E. So I'm curious, what what do you naturally hum? Well, I I tend to <laughs> like I, it, it tends to depend on uh, my mood and uh, and uh, and the song that's in my head, right? Because not the, when your plumbing's the, leaking, just when it's working well, great. <laughs> definitely a, a major major key after. Uh, when the plumbing's working, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's 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 fun stuff. It's fun to it's fun to to play music and talk about music because there's so much to it. There's, That's so cool. My great uncle used to be in a barbershop quartet, and he would talk about it all the time. Do you remember what part he sang? Was he a bass or a oh, lead? Yeah, or? he was a bass. Oh, those, that's that's the best part in the barbershop. Mm -hmm. the, oh, yeah. The low notes. Yeah. Um, I can't hit them. I, I wish that's, I could. That's what gives it, it it's it's everything. <laughs> that's what gives it the power, the the the, mm -hmm. the strength, the the legitimacy, the, you know, yeah. Gives it the yeah. body. I really like that. I do. I, yeah. I, I like those baritones. Yeah, a good friend of mine uh, uh, that I've known for many years, uh, he he came from a musical family down in the Bay Area. In fact, his family owns uh, a really famous piano store in Oakland. But uh, um, he used to have an a cappella group, five guys they called, they yeah. called the five, five Spots. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. uh, and they sang popular songs and uh uh, and competed in, in competitions and stuff. They were they were good. They were really a lot of fun to listen to. That is so cool. And to watch those competitions. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of fun because, mm -hmm. you know, the music is it's just really, it sounds great. And the guys and gals, because, you know, they have, uh, you know, we used to call them beauty shop quartets. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if that's still what they call them today, but um, yeah, yeah, the guys' groups, the girls' groups. I one of my favorite uh, close harmony groups was the uh, what were oh I'm blanking out the uh, quartets, and they mm -hmm. sang uh, the the famous version that you've all heard of Mr. Sandman. Oh yeah. oh yeah, you know, bum 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 bum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really gorgeous, beautiful, close harmony. Tight. Yep. Shane. Yes. So, you ever get nervous when you're performing in in a environment like that with other performers? Oh yeah, I was always a very nervous performer and and sometimes sometimes my nerves would would affect me adversely and sometimes they wouldn't it just depended usually it depends on how how um you know how how rehearsed you are how prepared you are do you small know? Did, did small groups or large groups, and when I mean small groups, I'm talking about small groups that you actually knew the people in the audience. Did that make a difference? I think that would make it worse. You know, know. It, you it, just, it, just, it just depends. Um, okay. It just depends. Um, 
Uh, and when I was younger, I w was just a lot more nervous about performing, period, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, as I've gotten older, you know, like doing the office Christmas party, you know, that's just fun. You know, that, that, there's nothing to get nervous about. That there. was magic, though. It was like you became this other person. It, it was a trip. You could switch it off and on. It was, I, I was really impressed with it, and I, I took a lot of notes on that. I, I was, yeah. But that's Thanks. a lot of lot of experience bleeding through, too. You know, okay. what's interesting about that is I, I think that's more the real me. The the me at work, the the director, the boss. Sure. I I think that's the that's the less natural role for me. Yeah. Um. You know, it's 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 uh, at least the way I do it. I think I I take it. I, I think I'm overly serious uh, in that role. <laughs> You know, because because of the feedback I've gotten from people, you know. But it, but it, you know, it serves a purpose. But you know, you know what I will say when I saw you, quote unquote, on stage, just the confidence. You were the right man for the job. You were who you know. You and Liz, it was it was just killer. It was just phenomenal. I was standing right behind you guys and next to you. I could smell you. I could hear you. I, I, and, and it was just like, it was the ultimate in, in a learning experience. It really was. It's, it's a great well, time. And, we, and, and we were having so much fun, you know, and that's the thing. That's and the you key know, is, Shane, is the fun part of it. Yeah, Melody. I make fun of Paul all the time because I tell him <laughs> he's going to become that boring, too serious person. Now he got that job. <laughs> yeah. Well, Paul, know, said, Paul is... Paul is one of the most naturally loose people I know. I know, so. because when he was my teacher, I would, we would joke, and I would send him an email. He would make me do homework, and I would send him jokes. And I said, well, I guess I can't send you jokes now, because you're going to be all that boring person now. <laughs> <laughs> so I call him Mr. Gray sometimes. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I, 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 uh, um, yeah, I, I think Paul would do a better job of, of – uh, keeping his uh his lightness uh, around mm -hmm. that position it's very yeah. inviting yeah we'll have to get him into the music group we'll loosen him up a little bit <laughs> you know you know he plays guitar and he's actually pretty good at it i didn't know he even played oh i yeah i've got recordings of me and him playing him and joe playing several others he likes to play kind of more bluesy so is, I, it's good. a lot of blind people who are in instruments is that just yeah, yeah, you know, or into you know, music. I, 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 I kind of, and maybe I'm wrong, but one of the things I've noticed is blindness doesn't discriminate. It doesn't really care about all the differences. And mm -hmm. when music, when you, when it really comes down to it, and you put a bunch of us together, none of that, none of those differences matter. We, we come together as a group. That's that's why I do yeah. it. That's that's why I keep coming back to it. Mm -hmm. That's no, why that's, I always like music. It's like it doesn't this. matter if I can see what's Soon going on. It, it or you know, it, it doesn't matter how old I am. What my none of that stuff matters. What the color it's of like my skin? Universal. None of it. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter what my economic status. It, none of that stuff matters. We just we feel each other and we just communicate that way. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and some of our mistakes are the best part of the performance oh and that's what really yeah are. and that you i know. think in some cases that's the best part of it because yeah. you might you might do something in it and the and the person sitting next to you it, it it sends them off in this other tangent and then the band follows them <laughs> yeah it, it's awesome yeah we have a lot of fun in that well we can't get can't get back to our room but we will eventually we're still connecting though Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and we're adapting to the to the situation. So I think that's what's really, really, really cool. I had a really good interview with Richard last night, and I, I can't wait to, to put that up. That'll oh, be coming up in the next two weeks for the podcast. All right, guys. I've got to go eat some dinner. Gotcha. Uh, Thanks, okay. everybody. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, James, for conducting oh, another, another great class. Oh, thanks, Shane. And like I and said, I'll go over the email. Yep. And and thank you, Melody, for coming again. It's great, great <laughs> to uh, spend some time with you. Yeah, I like them. It's good with the music. I, yeah. Yeah, we'll keep it going. The music always keeps me lifted. And it's like, yeah. 
Exactly. You, your questions help me too, Melody. <laughs> they, they really, they really do. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for everything, and I'll okay. be in touch. All Good right. night, folks. Good night. Good night. Good night.